Well, hello there, humans of these earthlings, whoever you are, wherever you are, whatever you're doing, and if you're lucky enough to be doing it too. I'm Bushka, and this is a Lillian and Gilly. That's me there in the middle of the grass. I've chucked my secondary weapon away so no one can see the car 98 that was strapped across my back. It was sad to say goodbye to it, but let's be honest, if you're in a ghillie suit and uh, you can hide your sneakers, there is absolutely nothing for the world to see here apart from a lump of grass that has a awful lot of firepower. Now, this is uh, going to be a regular-ish segment. I'm going to run you through a bunch of chicken dinners that I had um, that I thought were worth having a look at. I'm not going to run you through entire games, obviously, because this would be a very, very long, boring video. Um, what I'm going to do instead is run you through the highlights of those games, um, talk a little bit about the tactics that I use, uh, and maybe make this a regular feature. Uh, you know, let's call it the Flightless Bird Episode 1. There we go. We just named it the Flightless Bird episode z1 there's one other dude left here we're going to finish him and then i'm going to show you a game i had where i kicked off in the military base and i came out of there darwinian style jumped in my don johnson miami vice big big boat and rolled on out and i had to jump in the boat because there was basically no other way around it very low uh rating there for a chicken dinner under 90 you know you've just been a sneaky grub here we go don johnson style in the boat now Military base was where I, I jumped. I often jump military base because there's lots of good loot. And let's let's face it, if you want to jump and play solo, you want to have a lot of fun. And you're going to have a lot of fun when you're shooting at other dudes and dudettes. Uh, and over here, there's someone who decided they need to go and have a bio break, make coffee, um, sell some shares. They might have been doing a bit of trading on the markets. Markets opened in Tokyo a little bit down this morning and they're a bit worried about it. So I say, that's fine. If you've got to work, there's no reason to uh, stop. You should just go work. Um, and that's it. Now, I spent most of my time in military base, and I actually ended up in a big mano a mano there with a dude sniping me. It took me ages to get out. I was pinned down over the back of the thing. And consequently, I just spent most of the game chasing the zone line. I had to get a boat out of there. There was a dude camping the bridge. It was torture, and that was really, really boring. So I'm not going to show you all that. We nutted another two guys apart from that. AFK, not really the most exciting game. The reason I did want to show you this game was the Final Circle stuff. And I want to talk a little bit about Final Circle because a lot of my mates have come with me from the World of Tanks Blitz uh, channel where I've got, I don't know, 46,000 subs and about 12, 13 million views now. Um, and they've run over here and they don't really know a lot about this game. And I love the game. PUBG is a great fun all the time. There we go. Thanks very much. And if you... And if you're just kicking off your PUBG uh, career, this stuff should help you a little bit because I've made a lot of mistakes in an action-packed period and I'd like to show you what I've learned from there. You can see I'm approaching this final circle from the very, very edge where the beach is. Why am I doing that? One of the things that I've learned through trial and error is that there is a shallow edge to the blue line. Okay, And if you can surf in on that shallow edge, if you can ride that blue line in, it's very, very easy to approach final circle or the end of the game with a whole flank that you can pretty much be guaranteed is bare and vacant. There's no one coming in from the water. Uh, anyone that's coming in from that angle below me, like that guy that I killed just crossing over, um, this guy down there is in a terrible spot. Um, and we make the most of that with the single shots from the scar. Um, Anyone that's coming in from the water or that area, I will see, okay? And now I have this hill between me and the rest of the mob. Why is that good? You can see there's only three left. Now, I, that's the magics of modern medicine there. I've chopped out the parts where they all shot each other. I've got a hill between me and them. There's no one behind me. This is the safest final circle position in the entire known universe. And you're going to see the guys on the other side have been shredding each other. And one of them is, I just spotted him up there to the very end very very just the top of his head right and i've got no one around me and i know that because i've come in from the shallow side of the circle i could be unlucky someone could have skirted around the hill i haven't heard them and everyone else that tried to skirt around the hill got shot by the guys on the other side i know there's someone there i'm just going to toss a very quiet little grin just over the brow of the hill there we go thank you very much two left now because i am on the far side of the hill I'm going to do a little bit of misdirection here. Now, this is something I'm going to show you in a couple of videos, in a couple of my final circle moments, and it's really good fun, and it's something that some people do, not a lot of people utilize them. Everyone picks up these smoke grins, right? They pick these smoke grins up, and then they don't use them. Like, people 
always have smoke grains on their deceased carcasses. What I like to do as we get towards final circle is if I'm on one side of a hill and the circle's about to shrink, I'll toss a smoke grain, create a little bit of misdirection, and then look for people looking at that grain or make my move towards a safer part of the circle while they're looking at that grain. And you can see I've got a hill in front of me here. There's no one on the left looking at the grain, no one on the, oh, there he is on the right, looking at that grain area. Thank you very much. Winner, winner, chicken Z dinner. Now that was, again, not a big, big uh, chicken dinner, that one, because I was just one military base, 93, not particularly massive, one military base, but was running in the whole time. And it, I've killed three guys here already. Uh, and there is a dude who's been camping this house here and I've been pinned down. I'm trying to get through him because the circle's coming in and he's killed a bunch of people, this guy. He's done really, really well, actually. And I've more or less been stuck. Uh, there was another guy with a, uh, a sniper rifle on the far flank and I've been funneled towards this area here. Here comes the blue line and it's really got me down. Uh, this has been a tough one. So I've got, to, I've got to nut this bloke. There's no two ways around it. I'm running around. I want to camp his car. If he is looking for that car, and I, indeed he is, he thinks I'm actually assaulting up, so he's looking over the edge, and I take that opportunity, a couple of headshots, and then we jump straight in the car and take off. Now, this is a wonderful example of the pure greed of the humans. I stop... I'm going to uh, med kit up and then roll back in. There is a crate just up ahead, right? There is dead set of crate just up ahead. And there are two or three people still contesting it. Guess what? The crate is behind the radioactive curtain of justice. And there are still humans contesting it. And not only that, as I drive by, they're going to shoot at me. This is absolutely nuts. These guys are running around the crate, firing at each other. And then they're going to fire off a few rounds at me just for good measure and tell everyone where they are anyway. And that lets me know, hey, we've got numpties. Numpties at six o'clock. Numpties at six o'clock. I mean, look, they're still there. They're still behind the crate. I'm like, congratulations. You won the opportunity to get sniped all to hell. Thank you very, very much. I'm going to now heal on up, jump back in my buggy, and look, there is a car on my right. If the circle is on the other side of the bridge, this is something you've got to do all the time. You've got to contest those bridges. There's only seven people left. That is one guy. That's like 14% of possible outcomes right there on my right flank. I got to get across that bridge first. When I get across the bridge, I'm going to pull up hard, hot and heavy. He's got the circle coming in like thunder behind him. He has to attempt to cross and we're going to, well, we're going to take advantage of it. There's no two ways around this. This is very, very cheeky, very, very cheap. Where's the driver's side window? Thank you. Thank you, mother, for the rabbits. Uh, and then, as I'm running away to actually... Oh, there's another one. Get the head, get the head, get the head. Oh, finally. So, we've lowered the odds dramatically. 28% of the player base is gone. Now, remember what I said last time about coming in from the shallow side. I'm going to fast forward this, but you can see right there. The circle is above me. I can see the river. I'm checking out down on the right-hand side the whole time. I've killed two blokes who are already there. I know there's at least a couple up here uh, that have been camping. I've been seeing it go off. So I've found a shallow depression, and I'm going to move back up towards the cap circle like this. So... I've gathered up that information. I know my rear is pretty safe. There's no one coming up behind me. If I'm unlucky, there's someone camping in this grass, but I'm pretty sure they aren't. There is a house in the middle of the circle. You can see the yellow spot there uh, in the top northwestern corner of the mini-map, in the top right-hand corner. Um, there's been a lot of shots and a lot of firefights going on from this direction, and I think there are people camping in that house. So if there's one guy in the house, if there's no one behind me, then there's probably three guys in the circle somewhere up around that house. Awesome. So now I'm going to push forward. If you're crawling through the grass, uh, one of the things I like to do is not crawl across the open part of the grass. Uh, so I'll move around. Now, here we go. We're going to throw smoke again because I've got to move. When the smoke goes off... Oh, hang on, there's a bloke up there. Smoke's going to go off. He's moving about. We'll have him. Just whenever you throw smoke, it just does things. It makes the action happen. 
and I'm now moving away from that smoke. So it doesn't hurt me to throw that. I've got another smoke grenade left, and I'm saving that for if I have to move in the circle again. Now, I'm pretty certain there's a guy in that house up there. That means there's possibly one guy outside the house. I don't think he's behind me. I think he is probably up within the circle on the shallow edge on the western flank. That's a guesstimate, but you know, you've got to be a little bit lucky in this stuff. So I'm moving up towards that area there, and then I'm going to hit just below the crest of the hill inside the circle. So I've got a guy in the house. I'm still assuming there's a guy in that house, right? I just, I mean, I'm pretty certain there's a guy in that house. <laughs> you can't be sure. That does sound a little bit silly. So I'm going to throw another smoke grin and get them looking that direction and then I'm going to move up towards that house. This is what I like to do in final circle. You've got the ability to have a little bit of misdirection going on your way. I don't know why more people don't do it. It works really, really well. You get people looking out towards that smoke because people throw smoke to run through all the time and there he is, he's in the house. Now I don't mind if there's two people left, I'll actually peek to get that shot. There you go. And then straight back down. Now, they must know that I'm here, but there's one guy left, and they he comes out of the house or goes and, and loots or looks in the house on my right in a sec. I swear to God, he's still looking at the smoke. You watch. You watch. He's going to pop on my right in just a second. You can see the doors open. There he is. He's still, he's, he still thinks it's out there. Here he goes. We're going to go straight to our feet while zoomed in. When are we in a chicken dinner? Controlling that circle, baby. Uh, 10 kills, and that's going to be a better game. Um, pretty much controlled it all the way across. Now, this is a great game with Ouija and Snake. If you're wondering what I'm doing here, uh, we are behind the blue line. There's been a massive bunch of firefights up here, and we haven't been able to move. Snake's getting the buggy these guys were running for. You can see the buggy is injured. Ouija and I are clearing them, and then we're going to get in the buggy, drive that thing, Maxi. And, uh, and roll on through. And now I have a great time running around with these two idiots. And this game is absolutely tense as anything. Uh, and a really, really good fun game. We're going to finish with... Sorry, finish with this one. Jump in, Azza. Jump in. Maxi has the burning engine of justice and desire. Uh, I don't know why he's trying to run Ouija over there. We are behind the blue line, guys. Could we get moving? Excellent, 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 excellent. We're going to drive forward, then pull up, meet up, get ourselves healthy again. Or as healthy as uh, three big Aussie blokes can possibly be. And do that in the red zone here by jumping inside a house. Now, if they blow up our car, you know, you get that on the big jobs. Now, I've got massive big rocky boulders. We've already killed a couple of humans and I've picked up a military best, vest. What's a rocky boulder? That's your shoulders. And what do I mean by rocky boulders? I've got big rocky boulders. I mean, that I do like to do a little bit of carrying. And I'm mucking around with my gear. Oh, there's a dude outside. Hang on one second. Finish the dudes! That's uh, one member of squad in Justice for All. I'm not exactly the most patient of players. I like to be quite aggressive because, you know, eh, camping, can, most people can, can go camp. There's another bike down there. We clear him. That's two, two members of Z squad. There's another bike somewhere else. Or is that all? Oh, hang on, we got another bike. There's a third. Oh my God, spray it and pray it, Bushka, you absolute muppet. And that's three, and I think that was all the members of the squad. So we mount back up in the burning Jeep and go off into the wild blue yonder. And Snake and Ouija spot another baddie. They spot another UAZ. Now I know it's a UAZ, this Jeep, because that's what Snake says it is. And Snake was in uh, the Russian army in national service as a sniper for a couple of years. So he knows exactly what he's talking about. And we are very Highlander-esque in our approach to vehicles. There's an opportunity to have fun when you're in a UAZ. And uh, if there's another UAZ, you've got to have a firefight. And this is like the best. This is like pirate ships, broadside. I've gone high in the mountain. Wreck em, boys. Wreck em. Fire those, fire those guns of Navarone. Off we go. Ramming speed, Captain. I'm actually going to ram a rock, which isn't cool. But it doesn't matter. The boys finish him all off anyway. <laughs> it's just... <laughs> and then we start to do the loot. I mean, 
how fun is this game? It's excellent. Now this game gets really tense. Ouija has a couple of clutch, clutch moments. Uh, just absolutely fantastic. Um, the circle is shrinking. Oh, someone's firing at us. I've got a car 98. I'm trying to get footage for a car 98 video at the moment, by the way. Uh, well, for a sniper rifle video. So I'm trying to get the, sh the car 98 into... Nah, it's just not worth it. We're just going to shoot. General, generically shoot that whole area there. Ouija takes him out. Some excellent marksmanship there, Bushka. I'm going to roll on up here and then just start looting because I need stuff. Uh, launch stuff. I need stuff. <laughs> Everyone's looting. You can see Azza. Azza's been shot too many times at loot crates. He is moving around like a someone on a hot plate. A, a bug on a hot plate. Cockroach on a hot plate. There's another bloke there. I can see him. Let's move up and nothing. There you go. A little bit of sneaky business, men's business. And there's some bloke behind us. Squad reveal. We're taking out the squad, amigos. And again, we are behind the blue line. Excellent blue line management. We are kicking so much ass. But we're going to take the UAZ of our enemies. Ouija, if you could just slow down and let me in, that's great. Drive, drive, drive. <laughs> this is so much fun. As it takes off, and we move on towards what will be a very, very interesting final circle. Now, one of the things I love about this game is if you are too aggressive, you'll just get wrecked. Snake Eyes got shot there. We've cleared a, a bunch of people off, right? So there's still five left. And Snake Eyes, there's a bloke in the window shooting me, but there's another bloke in between him and me in the grass. So I'm trying not to get shot by the bloke in the grass. At the same time, the guy in the window is shooting me. There's a guy behind me, I think. I'm not certain. So I get over here just behind the rock and Azza with the clutch revive. Look at this. Weege's got no hit points left. I'm bleeding out. We get a clutch revive out and then I have to jump back down the bottom of the hill. I still don't know where the guy in the grass is that got snake eyes and the guy that is actually up in the uh, the house there or the, the radar area is also fully kitted out. So what I'm going to do, there's Faint Love Never One Fair Maiden. I'm going to go burning around the bottom of the hill like a man possessed, like Big Arnie, like Sylvester uh, Stallone in First Blood and try to flank him. We still can't see his platoon mate or his squad mate who is somewhere in the long grass. Uh, I think this is a squad of three. There is two guys that we've got locations on at the moment. There is one guy who's completely off the reservation. Now, it's either a squad of three or a squad of two plus one lone wolf gunman running around somewhere. So I'm flanking pretty hard into this radar area. Now, watch if you watch on the left of screen, there is a guy in the basement who's been shooting me, but I don't see him just as, Oh, you just saw if he flicked there. So I'm going straight up to the top before anyone has a chance to do anything. And then I'm going to hang out right here, make sure that the second guy isn't up here as well, and then lie down and camp the door, basically. That's what I'm going to do. Uh, here we go. Lie down, turn around, camp your door. So we get that guy. That was a bloke who uh, was helping the bloke in the grass. There is two more left, right? Two more in this other squad left. And I actually think that bloke there might have been a lone gunman. We'll never know. We heal up again. As is on the far flank, I've got no helmet, no body armor. It's all but done. I find a helmet downstairs, and then we're waiting. And this is where things get really, really interesting. We can hear movement outside, but there is this absolute mongrel in the grass about 20 feet from the front door, and we have not been able to find him. Just have not been able to find him. He wrecked Snake, he wrecked me, he wrecked Azza. Um, where he where he is, we have absolutely no idea. And this is high tense poker. We're in the middle of the zone line now. We've taken the house back and just using our ears, looking for opportunities, guarding the windows. And one of these blokes is going to approach. There's a Gren, another Gren. going to pop soon. How tense is this? You can smell it. The taste of victory is in the air. Any moment now, they're going to come and make a rush for this window. Everyone be quiet. Here they come. 
We're gonna hear footsteps. Footy McSteppersons. But we can't see him. He's gently traipsing. Traipsing. Traipsing more now. Traipsing. Traipsing now. He's got that familiar left foot, right foot action. Ah, oh, there's he. He's at the window. He's peaked. Get wrecked. Now he's knocked. I'm going to push hard because I do not want his mate reviving him. And unfortunately, we can't see his mate. Oh, we can hear him though. <laughs> he's belted as a... He's still in that freaking grass. Where is he? I can't see him. I can't see him. Look at... I've got basically a bee's dick worth of health left. This kid has been driving us insane. He is... He's right there, but we can't see him. I don't know what the hell he's doing, but it's impossible to find him. We're now dancing around. I'm looking through the windows. He's got to be right here. Surely, where is he? As is like, he's right there. Can you see him? No. Where is he? He's right there. I can't see him. Okay, maybe if I go here. Oh, the window. Oh, he's got me again. Get out of there. Honest to God, I've slowed this down. I've slowed this video down, and I can't see him in the grass at all, right until the end of the video. So what I plan to do here is just wait behind this thing and use the cap circle, look for any kind of movement, and I eventually see a tiny movement. See that, that green come in? So I know he's over there near that bush, just on that left window near the front. There's another green. I get behind the door. He's dancing around all over the place. I'm looking for him, and I finally see the movement near that tree in the front left window at about 2.10, and I'm like, oh my god, you are so going to get flogged now. There he is, right there, chicken dinner. I didn't show you all the video, all the kills, but we did a lot of damage there. 3,709 damage, 99.6. I actually did 4,800 damage the other day and got a 100 rating. I've never had a 100 rating before, but it was really, really cool. 11 kills, uh, snake eyes drove us everywhere, and as a with the medic reward, Snake Eyes with the freeloader reward. <laughs> Zero kills, 36 damage, but a lot of good driving. I hope you enjoyed that, the flightless bird. Let me know if you did. Uh, if you want any changes to the format, leave your comments below. Make sure to hammer that like button, you grubs. And until next time, stay safe on the battlefield. Bye for now.